Uh, hi, this is David. Welcome back. This is part two of the basics of game theory. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is do a very, very quick review of what we went over last time. Uh, last time we went over optimal bluffing, and we did it from the offensive angle. And basically we said that when bluffing optimally, our bet should have a ratio of value to bluffs that is exactly the same as the pot odds that we offer our opponent. For example, if we were to bet full pot, offering our opponent 2 to 1 pot odds for his call, we should have a hand that expects to be best when called twice as often as we have a bluff hand. In this example, our betting range should be composed of two-thirds value hands and one-third bluffs. Okay? Now, uh, we illustrated this concept using our very simple little one-card poker game. In this one-card poker, poker game, if you remember, player one is dealt one of these four cards random. He has an equal chance of getting even any one of them, and player two knows that he's going to be randomly dealt either a queen or a ten, and he will get them an equal portion. Player two is always dealt a jack. It's one card poker game, so they each get one uh, card, and whoever has the higher card wins. Now, we introduce betting to this game. Player one has the option when he gets his card to either bet $2 or to fold. Uh, player two has the option of either calling the $2 bet or folding. He does not have the option to raise, and that's the entire game. And we showed that the optimal strategy for player one is to maximize his profits so that we'll, uh, you know, if he doesn't have a good read on the opponent, is he should bet, uh, bluff optimally. Uh, since he is offering his opponent two to one pot odds, he should have two value bets for every one bluff. If he's betting two dollars into the two dollar pot, the opponent calls two to win four. So, when the opponent calls, he should expect to see two queens for every one time that he sees a ten. Now, by betting this way, We showed that uh, player one uh, will win $150 uh, per 100 hands, regardless of what strategy player two adopts. If player one always calls, player two always calls, uh, player one will be making 50 value bets and winning $4 each time for a $200 profit, and he'll be losing his 25 plus for $2 each, and losing $50 for $150 net profit. He'll come out exactly the same if player two always folds. He'll only be making his value bets for $100, but he'll also pick it, be picking up money on his bluffs. So he'll win $150 per hundred. He's absolutely indifferent. So what optimal bluffing essentially does is for all of the bets you make, it, it maximizes your average return. Okay? It maximizes your average return per bet, whether your opponent always calls always folds or has any mix in between. Okay, next we showed how this could be applicable to a holding game. We used in this example, uh, we have eight of clubs, seven of clubs. We played a suited connector. Uh, we don't know exactly how the action went, but we're now on the turn. We have one opponent, and we are to bet first on the river. Uh, the pot is $100. Our plan is to bet out full pot should we make our straight. And we have eight outs to make our straight. Now, because when we bet $100 into the $100 pot, we're offering our opponent two to one on his call, it's exactly the same as our little fictitious game. Since our opponent is getting two to one on his call, we should also have two value hands for every bluff. So if we have eight cards that make our straight, we should have four bluff cards, okay? And that will give us the same ratio of value bets to bluff as the pot odds we offer our opponent, and it will maximize our average return per bet. Okay? And we just need to pick bluff cards. What we were going to do is pick hearts for our bluff cards. Okay? We have eight cards to make our straight, so we will simply pick four different hearts uh, that do not make our straight. And if the river turns out to be a card that makes our straight, or one of our four hard bluff cards, we will bet out. Okay, so that's the quick summary of optimal betting from the offensive angle. We're also going to be looking at the defensive angle. Okay, suppose we're the other person.
in the other situation. Uh, suppose we have a jack right here, okay? And we're playing against this player who's going to be betting at us. Now, the way this game is actually played is we take turns, okay? This player doesn't get the jack all the time because we'd be disadvantaged. One hand, this player will be dealt one of the four random cards, and he'll have the option to bet. And then the next hand, it'll be just the opposite. We'll switch back and forth. So we know that when we're playing this game, we already know that our, what our correct offensive strategy is uh, when we're being dealt. Okay. What we want to know is what is the correct defensive strategy. Now, we know that if player one is playing optimally, okay, it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter whether we always call, whether we always fold. He's going to be making the same amount of money in, in either case. But what we're worried about is that this is a very good player who may make a good read on us and make more than he's entitled to. He may make more than the optimal amount. For instance, suppose he notices that we are folding too much. If we're folding too much, he could cheat. He's going to be making his 50 bets per 100, his value bets with his queen, and he'll be betting his bluff card whenever he gets that. But since we're folding too often, he may decide that when he gets the 10 of spades, he's going to bet that also maybe one out of every three times or one out of every four times. Okay? We may not notice this settlement, and he'll be making more than $150 per 100 bets. He's exploiting us. By the same token, Suppose he notices that we're calling too frequently, okay? Now, if we're calling too frequently, he'll still be betting his uh, $2 every time he gets a queen, which is $50 out of 100. But when he catches his bluff card, he's not going to bet this every time. He's going to bet only enough to keep doubt in our mind to keep us uh, calling, okay? Because we're calling so much, he doesn't need to waste his money on those bluffs. Maybe he only bets every second heart or every third heart or two-thirds of the hearts, or something like that. So he's going to be having many more value bets to bluffs, and he's going to be making more uh, than the $150 per hundred because he's exploiting our tendencies. Okay. So since we know that we're only making $150 per hundred, how do we assure that he makes no more than that? Well, we do that by using the optimal defense. And here's what the optimal defense is. What we do is we look at the odds your opponent would be getting on the bluff. We determine how frequently he wants you to fold in order to cross the zero EV threshold. Okay? So the zero EV threshold is the exact amount of your calls where he breaks even. We're going to call the exact amount needed to meet this threshold but not exceed it, and this denies him the ability to make profit. So, here's how we do it. Uh, when he made, bets full pot, he's betting one to win one. Okay? So he's getting one to one. For him to make a profit, he needs us to fold more than 50% of the time. What we're going to do is our optimal defense is make sure that we do not fold more than 50% of the time. In fact, we're going to flip a coin. If it's heads, we call. If it's tails, we fold. And we will just call exactly 50% of the time. What that will do is make his bluffs break even. If it doesn't matter if he never bluffs, they break even, or if he bluffs every time, they break even. Because when we call, he wins our $2. I mean, when we call, he loses his $2. And when we fold, he makes the $2 in antes. So we don't care how frequently he's bluffing. Now, what about when he's making his value bets? Same thing. He's going to be making 50 value bets per 100 for $2 each when he draws a queen. Half the time, we'll call him. So 25 times, he's going to make $4. That's $100. The other 25 times, we're going to be folding. And he's only going to make $2. So he makes $4 25 times for $100. And he makes $2 25 times for $50. So just like before, he makes exactly $150 per 100 hands. So that's it for now. Look forward to part three.